Hello, this is Hakuda B, and today we are going to be reading SCP-157, also known as a Mimetic Predator. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Speaking of Mimetics, then I have a thing that I want to read. We'll get to it. Item number SCP-157, Object Class Euclid. Special containment procedures. When not being used in the experiment, SCP-157 is restored in its cryptobiotic form in a dry airtight container. It is estimated that SCP-157 can survive in this condition for at least 10 years. Specimens needed for experimentation. Experimentation can be removed from storage and given water, then to restore them into a usable state. Personnel working with an active SCP-157 colony are cautioned not to eat, drink, change nothing, or apply any substances to their body in the presence of SCP-157. Foundation MTF agents are authorized to administer Class A amnestics to any survivors or witnesses of wild SCP-157 attacks. I think I might have read the name wrong. Mimetic, Mimetic, maybe. Description SCP-157 is a previously unknown microscopic animal in the tardigrade ate phylum, adapted to live on land as a predator. Like other tardigrades, SCP-157 is extremely resistant to environmental damage and can enter a cryptobiotic state when no food is present. SCP-157 slowly exists as an amorphous, its mass composed of millions of individual organisms. In this form, it can slowly crawl and climb. SCP-157 colonies are predatory and can attack insects and small animals while engulfing them and slowly disarming their prey with digestive enzymes. Humans and other large prey are not normally attacked directly by SCP-157 colonies, as they are too large to engulf, and long-term contact is necessary for SCP-157 to successfully feed. The organism has developed an alternative a method of achieving such contact. SCP-157 colonies possess an innate telepathic ability. When the presence of prey that is too large to directly attack, the SCP-157 colony will use help, adding to present the illusion of something its prey wants to eat, wear, or apply to its body. SCP-157 is highly toxic when eaten. So having and, and done so requires antidotes to redact it and redact it within 20 minutes, as well as immediate gastric surgery to remove the portion that was eaten. When applied to human and or animal skin, SC-157 will produce an anesthetic to encourage prey to ignore pain and leave the organism in place. It then dissolves and consumes the skin within 30 minutes to 2 hours. Dead prey is rapidly consumed, and SCP-157 will grow significantly as it feeds. When reaching a size of 5 kilograms, SCP-157 will split into smaller colonies that move off in search of new prey. When in the presence of two or more individuals, SCP-157 will have an inconsistent Appearance. It may appear to be a food item to one person and article of clothing to another. This could serve as a warning and prevent an exposure to the organism. Addendum. Note that due to its resilient nature, SCP-157 can be split into smaller pieces, boiled, microwaved, etc., and remain alive and dangerous. SCP-157 Capture instance. Instant 157.01. Found with extensive scalps up damage after mistaking SCP 157 for a bottle of shampoo and applying some to his hair. Victim was apparently immune to SCP 157 and, and began screaming, attracting the attention of his wife who had been eating a snack. SCP 
It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. He had a pastrami sandwich on his head and it was eating him. Victim treated for chemical burns. As we went to evidence capture of life, victim wife giving class A amnestics and a release. Instant 157 and 02. Reducted. Found partially consumed by SV 157 in his office at Blank Co. After apparently believing SV 157 was a pair of socks and wearing them. Victim bled to death after feet and lower legs were mostly dissolved. Incident 15703. Stand monitoring a police report revealed a missing persons case where the investigating officers observed a couch slowly attempting to crawl towards the door of the victim's apartment. Couch. Couch initially sealed in area by police. Foundation agents later determined it to be an unusually large variant of SCP-157 and contained the specimen. Amnestics administered on a large urge enough to attack humans directly. This specimen prefers to use its telepathic ability to attract prey in the manner of smaller SCP-157 colonies. Basically, SCP-157 is a is a mimic. Have you ever played the indie? A mimic is basically a shapeshifter, a creature that wants to eat humans, and it can and shapeshift as any object you can think of. It's gonna become a meme that your cup is a mimic, your table is a mimic, your windows are a mimic. You can't even go outside because your door is a mimic. You can never escape mimics. They are everywhere and everything. Anyway, if you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!